welcome back to the Citizen Channel. We're all staying safe. Well, this is a part two, so make sure you've gone back and watched part one because we're looking at the, the time at City of, of course, Sergio Gomez, who's uh, now left us after a couple of seasons. So this is part two. Goodbye and good luck. Yeah, in part one, we looked at a more stop than start first season at City. He started very well, but then he had a, a shocker in the Champions League and it sort of affected, I think, the rest, the rest of the season for him and obviously Pep's plans for him, I think. Of course, uh, he was a supposedly a boyhood City fan, uh, of course, a big fan of David Silva. Uh, would his second season see him being anywhere nearer the forefront of Pep's plans? Did he forgive? Did he play himself into it? Well, I think you know the answer to that, don't we? But we'll have a look anyway. We'll see how it went for him. Some reviews in this are from the Manchester Evening News, obviously from people like Tyrone Marshall, Simon Bukowski, but I'll, I'll note that and I'll also give you any thoughts I had at the time uh, in my vlogs on, on how uh, Sergio played in these games as well. So uh, please uh, join me for this part too. Please, if you are new to the channel, push that subscribe button, push the bell notifications, everything. City past, present, as long as I can keep going. There's stuff on film and TV as well on the channel, so if that's of any interest, have a look at that. Uh, it'd be great to, uh, to uh, if, if you know anyone who might be interested who's not obviously interested in City, that's absolutely fantastic. And I'm also interested in anyone who wants to help or sponsor or support the channel. Uh, friends of the channel, for instance, uh, Piat6505, they got a little eBay shop where they sell rare movie posters from the 1990s and 2000s and some rare DVDs as well. If you go on a search on eBay for Piat6505 or you just simply copy and paste the description below, the link in the description below. It'll take you straight to their shop. It'd be great gifts as well if people who like films and TV, some say from especially from the nineties and the old. So uh, have a look, guys. And if you do place an order, all you simply uh, all you need to do is just message them with the order uh, to and quote my quote me any of my socials or the YouTube channel, and you'll get an immediate ten percent refund as well. So supporting the channel so uh, support them guys if you can that'd be be a great help right let's get back on to this we're going to on to season 23 24 and better news for gomez in the close season under 21 european competition despite losing to england uh, in the final gomez was voted spain's player of the tournament so he did all right so that was a good start for him in pre-season on july the 23rd richard fay the Manchester news commented on his full second half 45 minutes in the tour match against Yokohama and said he was a live wire on the left, rating him a 7 out of 10. Only Rodri and Palmer rated higher than that. I rated him a 6.5 and said confident, but it didn't always work. But he looked okay. In another second half, 45 minutes displayed a 2 1 win over Bayern Munich on the 26th of July. The Manchester Evening News said added energy and enterprise, but not much in the way of end products, and give him a 6 out of 10. I only give him a 5.5. I just said not much, really. On the 30th of July, a 2 1 loss to Atletico Madrid for the Manchester Evening News. They said did well to drag play up the pitch, could have contributed more defensively. A brilliant corner for the Diaz goal, and give him a 6 out of 10. I also give him a 6. I said like many never really got into it a good corner and a booking that sort of summed up his match it was the 2nd of September before he featured in a 5-1 home win over Fulham and got his second and final assist for City Simon Bukowski uh, commented on the, on the player he came on for Doku on 76 minutes didn't do much in a game that was already won give him a 6 out of 10 I said apart from a great work to assist you mean Simon because he seems to forget about that but there you go on the 16th of September away at West Ham he was an 89th minute substitute for Doku he got his first start of the season in the Champions League on the 19th of September, a home game with Red Star Belgrade. That ended 3-1. Simon Bukowski said of his performance, a surprise start at left back, but held his own and fizzed some cracking balls into the box and gave him a 7 out of 10. For me, he, for me, he also got a 7. A very good first half. He faded in the second, but some half-decent crosses. Unlucky not to get at least one assist, I claimed. Simon was surprised by the Gomez start. He said Pepe explained why he started him. He said he can play as a full-back or a winger. He can play in several positions. In attack, we need a player that can do that. And he trains very well. He's a lovely, lovely guy. 
This time we fell at the first hurdle in the Carabao Cup, a 1-0 defeat at Newcastle on the 27th of September and Sergio had a surprise position to play in. Joel Bray said, It wasn't a surprise that Gomez started, but it was a shot to see him play on the right wing, his natural position. After a shaky start, he put some nice touches together and looked to fret with his running and distribution. He switched back to the left back for the last half hour. He caught, scored him a 6 out of 10. I also give him a six. I said, out of position, not a disaster, but underutilised for me. On the 25th of October, away at Young Boys, it was a 3-1 win. Gomez came on for Haaland in the 90th minute. Sergio took a knot that made him unavailable for a couple of weeks in November. And of a very late appearance on the 28th of November, in a 3-2 home win over Red Bull Leipzig, Gomez replaced Guardiola on 90 minutes. Another start in the Champions League against Red Star Belgrade, a 3-2 away win. Simon Bukowski said of, the, of his play, struggled in the first half and Guardiola was letting him know about it, but stabilised as the game went on and scored him a 6 out of 10. I thought in and out from Gomez, not surprising after his lack of starts, I also give him a 6 out of 10. A City bidded for the world domination on the 19th of December against Urawa Red Diamonds, a 3-0 win in the Club World Cup. Tyrone Marshall commented about his performance, moved into midfield but nearly got caught on the ball and gave him a 6 out of, out of 10. He was beyond the bench when City became world champions. Round 3 of the FA Cup gave Sergio a start in a 5-0 home win over Huddersfield on the 7th of January. Simon Bukowski said, playing a hybrid role half up the left flank, some of his passing wasn't as soft as it needed to be, but he got involved in the opposition's box and gave him a 7 out of 10. I give him a little bit less. I give him a 6.5. I said, took his chance reasonably well again for giving a lot as he's not had much opportunity. On the 31st of January, it ended City 3, Burnley 1. Gomez replaced Alvarez on 86 minutes away at Kenilworth Road against Luton on the 27th of February. A 6-2 hammer in the FA Cup. Yeah, there's no rain to stop this one. Gomez replaced Aki on 77 minutes. Simon said, did okay in his first minutes for a while and give him a 6 out of 10. I simply agree with what he said. He had a chance to shine back in the Champions League round of 16 with a second half outing on the 6th of March in a 3-1 home win over Copenhagen. It ended 6-2 on aggregate. Gomez for Rodri on 46 minutes. The Manchester Evening News said the most time he has had since Huddersfield in early January and he cruised through giving him a 6 out of 10. For me, I said a full half, keen stuff not always coming off. A City play catch, I give him a 6 as well. A City play catch up with the title back in Arsenal's own hands in a big clash, a 4-1 win over Villa on the 3rd of April. Simon said of goal. Gomez, who replaced Do Doku on 80 minutes, a cameo on the right wing, give him 6 out of 10 for that. In the Villa Match Day programme, some Premier League stats on Sergio made quite interesting reading. At that stage in the Premier League, he'd made 15 appearances, he'd scored no goals, managed two assists, 304 passes, 20.27 passes per match, 10 crosses, his cross accuracy was just 20%, tackles 9, duels won 16 and aerial battles won 3. On the 13th of April in a 5-1 home went over Luton, uh, Simon says... Uh, Simon Simon said eyes lit up as the ball arrived on the edge of the box but then he fell over yes he replaced De Bruyne on 81 perhaps he was trying to be the inner KDB he gave him a 6 out of 10 Sergio was on the bench for the Real Madrid quarter-final games as of course we relinquished our trophy he sat on the bench for the FA Cup semi-final win this time over Chelsea on the 20th of April but as a slip up by Arsenal put City back on track for a four peak Premier League title in a 4 0 win at Brighton on the 25th of April, he came on in the 78th minute. Joel Bray said, came on in Rodgers' position in midfield and gave him a 6 out of 10. And this, as I was there that night, this would be the last time we saw him in action. He was on the bench for the next three Premier League games, but not in the squad for the final two. Uh, neither was he for the FA Cup final himself. His season stats in the Premier League, he made no starts whatsoever, just six sub appearances. In the Champions League, he made two starts, three sub appearances. In the FA Cup, one start, one sub appearances, one appearance in the Carabao Cup, and of course, a sub appearance in the World Club Cup. So there you go, frustrating second season for Sergio. 
and the writing appeared on the wall for a move for the Spaniard. But never he's never one, was he? Never one to complain or any hint of a problem off the pitch, despite his rare appearances and all not being so well. And he always gave 100% when he did play, when he was asked to play, even if only just for a few minutes, sometimes just a couple of minutes. On the 12th of July 2024, it was finally announced that Sergio had left City and completed a permanent move to Real Sociedad. He said, it's time to leave City, but I'd like to thank everyone at the CFA for their support and guidance during my time at the club, said the Spaniard. Being part of such a talented, ambitious and successful squad was a true honour and winning a host of major trophies, including the treble, is something I will never, ever forget and I will always look back fondly on. I'm excited for this new adventure, but I wish Pep and all the players every success in the future. He tweeted or he exed the two unforgettable years with City we have won titles, lived unique experiences and fulfilled dreams. Defending the badge of a club that I've always loved is priceless. I will continue cheering from afar because the club is part of my heart. Forever grateful. Director of Football Cheeky Big. Bagiristain added, I'd like to thank Sergio for his time at City. He's an impressive young footballer with a good attitude and strong application who I have no doubt will make his mark and excel in the coming years. Well, there you go, guys. It's a shame it never worked out for Sergio, but he did live the City fans' dream, didn't he? I think that we'd all love to do it, for his, to play for your boyhood club. Hey, and not just that, but winning trophies along with it as well. That'd be absolutely brilliant, absolutely stunning. You know, he lived, lived what most of us wanted or would have wanted. He had one or two errors that possibly gave Pep doubts about his mettle as a City player. But as we've seen from looking back in his feet, he did have talent, but just perhaps in the right place, but at the wrong time. It will be interesting to see how his career progresses, of course. So all I'm going to say is thank you, Sergio, and good luck. No doubt we will see you. Our, cross, our paths will cross, uh, no doubt, in the future, uh, one way or another. And just stay safe and prosper, Blue. That's all I can say. Thanks. So hope you enjoyed that, guys, anyway. And our, our wishes, the best wishes to Sergio and everyone uh, connected with him. And I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know your thoughts and memories of, of Sergio, guys. Anything significant uh, you can think of? There's some great images of him there with celebrating as well. So I hope you enjoyed that. Please, uh, you can also follow me on my socials. I'm on X and TikTok uh, at the same address, at Bird underscore Denise. So I post loads of city stuff on there and also film and TV stuff, as, you, as you're probably aware. Uh, I'm on Facebook at Bird Denise. And yeah, if you are interested, as I said, in sponsoring or supporting the channel in some way, we do have memberships open now, just 99p a month, which gives you full access to all my library of history vlogs that have not yet been published. There's quite a lot of them, so uh, if you do that, guys, you'll get full, and even even the new ones you'll get uh, earlier than, than published, so you'll get everything as and when it's done. So you'll get everything the same time as I finish them, so uh, if you're interested in that, guys, supporting the channel, uh, it'd be much appreciated. Right, I'm great to hear from you. Let me know about Sergio. Until we meet again, I only ask one thing, don't I? Please stay safe, Blues. Come on, City. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.